Hi everybody, welcome to another Prepping for Asylum Steampunk Weekend video here with me Joanna at Blue Lady Couture. So this is a project which has been quite a while in the planning um, but it's all kind of started to come together in the last few weeks as ideas just suddenly happened and yeah, things just, just started to work. So the project all started way back when I bought this material. Um, so this is a lovely purple and white striped cotton, um, which I absolutely loved. Um, and I bought it not really knowing what I was going to do with it. But I thought, you know, I'll get a couple of metres, stick it in my stash and you know, see what happens. That was probably about two years ago. Um, and it's only now really that this idea has has happened and hopefully I can bring it to life um, in time for the asylum next week. So here's my ideas. So this is my ideas uh, for this project. Um, can you guess what it is yet? Or maybe the clues in the title of the video. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so this is my Pinterest board. Um, Called steampunk for me. Um, now Pinterest, if you've not heard of it before, is a website and app where you can save images that you find um, either that you've taken or around the internet. Um, you can save them onto themed mood boards, so it's a really great way of collating images uh, together uh, for projects um, such as this. Um, some boards are public, anybody can look for them, but this particular one is actually a private board, since the, the little lock symbol there, so normally you can't just see this on the internet, um, although you can find these images obviously on the internet, but I'm keeping them not well, I'm keeping them secret for me, um, but the images themselves are out there for anyone um, to look at. So yeah, as you can possibly tell, uh, so we're going for a Mary Poppins theme, uh, and this is the image uh, that inspired me. And if I move that, and I'll just scroll it down a little bit. Obviously this is just a screenshot, and this has been saved from, uh, sorry, I think it's from a, a news article um, on people. Um, yeah, so this is the image that has inspired me, in particular this blouse, as you can probably guess from the striped fabric. So yeah, and I just thought this is so fun looking. I love the way they've played around with the stripes on different angles, um, which is obviously made up from different panels, um, and it just looks really fun and a bit of a challenge. Uh, so that's where I'm going with that. Um, I've already started playing around on the mannequin uh, with some, just some calico uh, to cut out a muck-up which will hopefully become a pattern before, uh, which I can then use to cut out the actual material. Um, but I just want to play around getting the proportions of the, the chevrons uh, right um, but before I, I go into the actual fabric as any good dressmaker ought to. Now, obviously, the new Mary Poppins film is set in the late 1930s, um, so she has a very different look to what she did in the original Edwardian set film. Um, and I actually decided that I want to go with a more earlier kind of look for this outfit. So I'm actually, well, I am still playing around with this, but whether it, it will work or not. Um, but actually to go for a more 1890s uh, style look with the outfit, which means giving her a, a lot bigger uh, poofy leg of mutton sleeves as they were called um, but I need to have a play around really because I don't know whether it's going to be a bit too much or whether to stick with something a bit simpler as she's got here just the simple striped straight sleeves that just gather into the uh, into the cuffs um, yeah I'm not 100% decided on that yet but I definitely 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 want to have a play around and do something similar to this this bodice uh, uh, style here with the different panels so coming back to the fabric, as you can see, this is going to be perfect for making a Mary Poppins style blouse and I can have some real fun uh, playing around with the, the angles with the cut of the fabric to get those really fun shapes. She says fun, I may regret this. <laughs> um, but in a little while I'll show you, I've already started prepping on the mannequin, um, the, the pattern before I actually cut out the fabric. Uh, so that's for the blouse. Then for the skirt, now I know in the film she wears a another kind of stripe for the skirt but I didn't really want to do that um, and I decided what I would like to do 
is basically make one of my Edwardian walking skirts, which I sell on my Etsy store if you're interested, um, but I'd like to make one for myself. Um, so I've got some lovely dark purple linen, which tones very nicely with the stripe. Um, and this is going to be used to make um, an Edwardian, 1890s Edwardian, that kind of crossover period um, skirt. So a nice long uh, bell-shaped skirt. Um, so that would be really good fun. So while I was just planning this outfit, um, and it really was just a plan of something that I would like to do at some point, um, it didn't really have a finish date. If, if it was finished for asylum, you know, that'd be great, um, but it wasn't essential. It was just one of those projects that I had in the back of my mind to do at some point. But then on my birthday, um, we were staying with some friends in Derbyshire. And as you do, we were wandering around and we fell into an antique shop. Um, and I came home with this. Yeah. <laughs> It, can't, it had to be, didn't it, really? Um, so as you can see, this is a lovely vintage parasol slash umbrella. Oh, that's it. My laptop's given up. Parasol slash umbrella, um, which has this gorgeous... Look at him. I love his little face. Oh, look at the focus. Um, so not a parrot, um, <laughs> but I just couldn't resist. And the colour, you know, it's... It's just incredible. Um, unfortunately, it is a little bit sun faded in places on the folds where it's been kept. I don't know if you'll be able to see that on there. Um, it looks better when it's actually. Shall I open it? Am I allowed to open it? it umbrellas inside. We'll, we'll, we'll half open it, shall we? So I can show you what it looks like. Oh, it's pretty. But yeah, can you see that? Yeah, I'm not going to open it fully because you're not going to see it all. Um, but you can see here, yeah, there's bits and I have tried to clean it, but it is, it's fading as opposed to muck, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not 100% decided what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, if you've got any ideas for what I could do with this, let me know. It would be great to hear. But even if I just keep it um, tied up, as a prop to wear as an accessory with the outfit um i think that'll be really cute so yes yeah, so that was the first prop so when i saw this yeah that was it that was decided really that i, I was making a mary poppins outfit at that point um, but i'm still going to keep with the more edwardiana like 1890s kind of twist on it um so then of course i need to think about a hat um mary poppins always wears a hat and of course uh, late victorian wooden ladies would have also always worn a hat so i had an idea obviously the obvious thing is to, is to trim a nice hat with with some leftover scraps of this to make a nice bow a nice band around it um and then i had the idea um following on from one of again from one of the costumes in the new mary poppins which I'm going to show you right now. So coming back to my Pinterest board that I showed you earlier to see this photo, uh, you'll see I've also saved a couple of pictures of some hats. Um, so this first picture over here is the the hat that uh, Emily Blunt wears as part of her costume in the new Mary Poppins film. Um, and obviously again, it's very 1930s into 40s style. Um, so it's not quite what I want for a 1990s look, um, but it's, you know, it, it's a starting point. Um, so it's this lovely red colour with the bat ribbon band around it. And then she has this lovely little uh, Robin motif uh, figure, which is obviously a nod to the little Robin in the original film, um, the one she's singing um, Spoonful of Sugar to um, in the nursery window. Um... No, I've just thought, is it a robin or is it a blackbird? I can't remember. I'm going to have to watch the film again to find out. But that's not, not a bad thing. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Back to um, back to the plan. So yeah, so I just like the simplicity of this. Um, and then my idea is to possibly do the, the ribbon to be in the, the striped fabric. Um, just to, to tie it all in, in together. Uh, and I'll show you the little, the little prop that I've got in mind um, for the, the, the bird motif as well. 
Yes, so after looking at the uh, hats in the, the new Mary Poppins film um, and having a think about how I could emulate that in some way, um, I then remembered about a little someone who would be perfect for it. And this little chap is actually out of my Christmas ornaments box. Uh, yeah, any excuse to raid the Christmas ornaments box, even though it is August. <laughs> um, but he's perfect. Look at him. He's so sparkly and pretty and his colours are just divine. So I'm still going to go with the whole um, striped ribbon um, and then having him perched on the brim somewhere. Um, I think it's going to look really cute. So yeah. So that is my plan. Now, as I said, I have started um, doing a mock-up of the, the pattern panels for the blouse on my mannequin and I will show you that. Um, and then yeah, you can follow along and see how I get on with this outfit. And fingers crossed, I might get to wear it to asylum next week. But yeah, let's not hold our breaths. <laughs> it is only a week to go. So yeah. Follow along. Okay, so I've started playing around on the mannequin with a piece of calico which I've cut out to shape. Um, and I'm hoping you'll be able to see. I've sketched out some pencil lines of where the panels will be and where the panels are not going to be. Um, so I'm just finishing off playing around with that and uh, then hopefully we can uh, do a bit more uh, prepping of the pattern. So as you can see, um, just playing around with panels, um, I've put the the dart, uh, the, the bust dart that gives you the, the shaping around the bust, I've put it into here, but that's actually going to become two separate panels um, between the, the, the yoke there up here and the lower section here. Um, so there won't be a dart there at all, but I can cut that out um, when I come to cut these shapes out. Um, I've not fitted it fully to the waist, uh, because it's, it's a blouse, it's going to get tucked into the, the waistband um, so it doesn't matter that it's not, not fully fitted at that point I don't think anyway, um, we shall see um, but for now I'm quite happy with it just to be a, a, a little bit looser then it'll just it'll tuck into the waistband without losing too much definition of the, the chevron shaping that we've got to go on there as well um, so yeah, so I think I've got all those pencil marks marked in and um, I am going to have to add some length to it as well so you can see I've cut the calico too short um, obviously because I try not to be wasteful I, I just cut a, sh a short length off uh, of my roll of calico um, but it was a little bit too short for actually what I wanted to do so, <laughs> but I know that I've got to add that on so that's fine um, so yeah, um, so I think I'm happy with that I'm not going to worry about the sleeves just yet or the the collar, I can work that out a bit later. Um, I just want to go out and start getting the um, the bodice panels together so I can see how it's looking. Um, because it's always fun when you start to see the fabric starting to come together. So let's do that next. Okay, so I've taken it off the the mannequin, um, and hopefully you can start to see some of these panel lines a bit more now. And I'm going to cut these out um, and separate these up, and then we're going to transfer it over onto some pattern paper. So I'm just going to take the, the pin out here where the dart is and then you can see where I'm going to cut that, that shape out to form the panel. Although now I'm looking at this, that panel line there is not very straight so that's going to have to be re-straightened. But that's why we do this, so we can have a play around and see how things look as we go along. I'm actually looking at this now and I'm thinking this line that's coming down here is going to be at the wrong angle for the stripes to match up. This this line needs to match the angle of this line. So I'm just going to have to pop it back on the mannequin and just reshift, just pin that dart up a bit more, I think. Um, because on this side, these stripes are coming down vertical, um, so it doesn't matter where that line sits. But on this side, I want the stripes to line up with these lines to create the chevron effect so that needs to come up a lot higher so I'm just going to go and repin that and I'll be back 
Okay, so I'm back and you can see where I've just shifted that dot up a little bit um, and now that line is sitting much more echoing this line on this side. Um, so that's fine, the, the dark panel line is now there. And where it does just mean I now need to just reshift um, on this side um, so that the, the length of these panels um, is, are even and that they match together. I normally wash this cotton at 40 degrees, um, so that's what the temperature I would normally wash it at um, you know, going forward to, to care for the clothes they've made out of it. Just because it's a coloured cotton, um, uh, it's a, a printed cotton, um, you don't want the colours bleaching out too much if you wash it too hot. Um, so yeah, 40 degrees. So as you can see, I've got the panels cut out and I've just laid them out so you can see how the patterns are going to fall um, and hopefully you can start to see it's taking the shape of uh, the Mary Poppins blouse from the movie. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting this sewn together, matching up those seam, not seam, matching up the pattern lines and uh, yeah, hopefully it'll look good. Okay, so I've cut out the panels in the striped fabric. Um, these are the back panels. The front panels are still on the cutting table, just so I don't get them muddled up because they're very similar. Um, so I'm going to concentrate on the back first as I'll do the front in a bit. Um, so what I've done, I've roughly laid them out here. Um, I've got the, the upper uh, parts of the, uh, the, the bodice and here the lower parts. Um, I've overlocked 
um, one edge, so the top edge on the lower panels, the bottom edge on the top panels, um, and I'm going to stitch those to their corresponding parts, and then I'm going to seam the from, from top to bottom in theory. So that. <laughs> the the top and the bottom panel sections all sewn together uh, and I've overlocked the long edges as well now it's just putting the panels together and I get the fun job of matching up this pattern wish me luck <laughs> Do a reveal. Do we want to see how matched up this is? <laughs> Are you ready? What do you reckon? Oh, mm. oh, not quite. It's a bit off. So it's not bad, can you see where it's off ever so slightly on the top, but I'll just have to unpick that bit and and do that bit again. But that's fine, <laughs> that's not bad for a first attempt. It's gonna look really fun. <laughs> fully pressed yet but I'm quite pleased with that. Just all the others to go now. <laughs> Okay, so you can see I've now got the bodice panels of the blouse all together and um, so hopefully you can see that um, the, the style coming together now. Um, put it on the mannequin just to have a play around and see how it's looking um, and I think what I'm going to end up doing is taking it in just a pinch on some of these panels. I don't want to overshape it too much and lose uh, too much of the, the chevron effect but I just think it just needs a little pinch in and a little bit more on the back uh, just to give it a little bit more more shaping on the waist um, to stop it being quite so, so baggy and loose um, obviously by the time I'm wearing it and I'm actually it's fitted in with a, with a waistband on my skirt uh, and all tucked in it won't be too bad but there's there's no point having that extra bulk if I don't have to um, so I'm going to play around and take that in a little bit and see how that's looking and then the next stage is to put the the, the button facing on the front and I can get the buttons in um, and then I can play around with the the collar and the sleeves um, I'm still not 100% decided on the sleeves but I think I'm gonna go for the 1890s uh, volume and <laughs> um, just because it's fun um, and you know why not <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, this afternoon's job to see how far I can get on and get this project finished. Okay, so that's the panels taken in at the waist. So just a tiny little pinch in on each seam. And I think you can agree that that's looking so much better. Just that little bit more definition on the waist. And that just reduces so much bulk being folded in when it's worn with a, a skirt or the waistband. So yeah, so I'm really pleased with how that's looking. Um, so yeah, so on to putting the bucket, button bracket in and uh, then we'll decide what I'm doing with the sleeves. Okay, I've sewn the button placket on to each side of the blouse. So that's just simply a strip of fabric cut on the same grain as the front piece of the blouse and just stitched on with one overlocked edge down there. And then I've, I've top stitched it along the seam there as well, just to stop it rolling, rolling forward when it's um, being worn. Um, so now I'm going to sort out the buttons and the buttonholes. So these are the buttons I picked up. So they're vintage buttons, and I actually picked them up uh, from the same antique shop as where I bought the, the parasol brolly from. Um, so yeah, and they, again, you can see that they've got a plastic covering on them on the, the board at the moment, but yeah, they're gonna look really pretty, I think, once they're out and catching the light. So yeah, so just to work out where they're going to go. Why is it? I always put my tape measure down and I can never find where I put it again. Every time. <sighs> and now I've not got chalk. Pins. Pins. Chalk. Okay, so actually, I don't need the tape measure after all that. Because um, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the white threaded buttonholes into the white stripe um, so I can just mark an even number of stripes um, down the front of the blouse so that, yeah, that's nice and easy. Okay, I'm just going to trim the seam allowance um, on that front seam back a little bit just so it doesn't interfere with the, the buttonhole and cause extra bulk. Okay, that's quite pretty. I'm just going to check the sizing because I've got quite a narrow. You can see there. If I turn it right way up. So that's the, the, the lower half of the, the blouse panel. Um, it's quite a narrow panel on there for the button stand, but it should be fine. But always best to check. Yeah, that's gonna be absolutely fine. Good. We have to say, even after all this time, I still get nervous when you say well, you're not even just the first buttonhole, but just sewing the buttonholes on garments because there's always that 
that small chance it could go wrong so hopefully it won't but <laughs> you never know <laughs> done and in one go as well. Yay! Actually, I'm going to button it on the mannequin. gonna do the sleeves sleeves yeah so I went for the full-on poofy 1890s style <laughs> I just think they're so fun um yeah so again it's gonna be a blouse that I'm probably not gonna wear to do the weekly shopping but hey ho um so yeah so the sleeves are in um I've put a little bit of a, a cuff detail around uh, the um the cuff <laughs> um which echoes the finish on the the mary poppins uh, film costume so it's just another little nod to that um but yeah i just decided to go with the the fuller gathered sleeves um cut on the on the bias um so you get that lovely angle effect echoed in the stripes so yes yeah, so that means all that's left to do now is put the collar on and finish the the hem um along the bottom and she is done but that is all i'm going to get done for today um we do have friends around for dinner very shortly and i need to go get ready so that's all my sewing for this afternoon i'll be back with an update uh, when she's finished hi everyone so this is the finished blouse i hope you like it <laughs> Um, you'll have to excuse me, it's quite late at night. Um, unfortunately, that's part and parcel of um, working for myself um, and having uh, a sewing business. Customers have to take priority for work during the day, um, which means sewing for myself tends to be uh, late into the evening or weekend affairs. Uh, and this is one of those projects, which obviously because I want to get it done for this coming weekend. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> it means uh, some few late evenings, so you'll have to excuse me if I sound really tired. Um, but yeah, overall, I'm quite pleased with how this has turned out. Um, obviously, the, the bodice more or less echoes the, uh, the costume in the Mary Poppins Returns film, um, and then I've added my own little twists to it um, with the, the 1890s poofy sleeves. Um, and I've also kind of done my own thing with the collar in the end. Um, you may have seen earlier in this video that I was playing around trying to get a more folded over kind of Peter Pan collar. Um, I, I just couldn't get it to work um, how I wanted it to. And then looking at the amount of fabric that I had left, um, I don't think I would have got it out, out the, the scrap that was left. So I've gone for just a fairly simple upright um, collar, um, but I've dipped, I've cut it at the front to dip it down a little bit, just to give it a little bit of shaping detail. Um, and yeah, just make it a little bit unique. Um, but yeah, overall, I think I'm very pleased with that. I'm just going to spin her around so you can see the back. Obviously because collars are generally cut on the curve, um, if it's straight up on one side it will be slightly off on the back. But that's fine, I've matched that up quite nicely so I'm quite happy with that. And then if we pull back, so there's a the full effect. Yeah, so hopefully, if you keep an eye on my social media, um, Facebook and Instagram, uh, you'll see photos of this blouse in action over Asylum weekend, this coming weekend. 
Um, obviously just to point out that I didn't get the skirt done. Um, again, it's just come down to a, a time issue really, which is a shame, but I do have another skirt of a very similar cut um, that I've made previously, uh, which is a kind of turquoisey blue with purple trim. So that will still work with this outfit and go for the sort of late 1890s um, theming. So anyway guys, I'm going to end it there. Thank you very much uh, for watching this video if you've made it all the way to the end. Um, if you like what you've seen, please do give me a thumbs up, maybe even subscribe. Um, and do follow me on social media um, to see photographs of my outfits in action. Hopefully I'll be able to get some video up of the Asylum uh, Steampunk Weekend as well. Um, but I won't be able to do that for a little while yet. Um, but yeah, do... Uh, follow me, click the little notification bell um, so you'll find out when my next video is uploaded. See you soon! Bye.